So hello everybody, it is Friday, so it's time for another DAX Fridays, a new DAX function every Friday. So in today's DAX Fridays, we're going to talk about finance. Yes, we're going to talk about internal rate of return. I'll show you how to calculate IRR, a function that does not exist, but I'll show you how to calculate manually. I'll show you how to calculate XIRR, and I'll show you how to calculate XNPV, net present value. So very, very quickly, just for those of you that are not finance people, but just want to have an idea of what I'm talking about, the internal rate of return is basically used to, to measure the profitability of things, for example, of projects or of a purchase of stuff. Let's say that you purchase one machine for one value that gives you some savings, but then you have the possibility to purchase the similar machine with features that cost more and gives you more savings. Which one is more profitable for you to buy? Which one will give you a return of your money faster, basically? Now, obviously, there are always other factors that you need to think about, like spare parts and service. And, but this is a, like in financial terms, which one should you choose? Which project should, will give you more return for your money? Okay, with that said, the example I have here is very, very simple. I have a period, so dates. I have um, a column with the cash flow, the, the money. The first line always has to be the investment that you make. So you have to have always a negative value and a positive value, otherwise it won't calculate. So the first one will have to be the investment. We buy a machine for $100,000. And the next lines, it will be the savings that that machine will give you. Okay, and then we want to see how profitable this machine it is. How, what is the re rate of return for the investment that we've made? So let's look at XIRR function. Um, it says here, returns the internal rate of return for a schedule of cash flows that is not necessarily periodic. That is the difference between IRR and XIRR. So with IRR, the periods need to be equal and periodic with XIRR, it is not, okay? And this is the syntax. You have a table, then you have the cash, then you have the dates. And then here is a guess, um, initial guess for the internal rate of return. And uh, here they have an example. And the cash flow values must contain at least one positive number and one negative number. The negative number again being the yeah, investment and then the cash flow returns. Um, something else. The dates have to be um, formatted as dates. The XIR gives you the, in, the annualized IRR. So how about we go to Power BI and we calculate this thing. It's actually pretty easy. So we go in here and we're going to calculate the annual XIRR, which is um, XIRR. And then the first one is the table that contains the data, which is project A. And then we need to have the cash flow. And then we need to have the dates. You just put them there. And then if you have the guess value, you put, you put it in, if otherwise you leave it blank, it's not mandatory. And now we format it as a percentage and that will give us the value, right? Which is, looks great. Now, this is the annual XIRR. I found on the website, uh, let me show you how to calculate monthly. And I thought that it might be useful for you. This is a great website, by the way. It explains everything like really, really good. Link down below, as always. So here we have, um, here it says this is annual, where do we have it? Here, it is annual cash flows. If you want to have monthly cash flows with XIRR, this is the formula that you need to use. So let's go and try that. We're going to go here into Power BI. And we're going to create a new measure. Come on, baby. And we're going to calculate the monthly X I R R. I've been saying something else, right? As always. Oh my God. So what you need to do is one plus um, X I R R. You create the 
Uh, obviously, you can have this as a variable if you want. I don't think it's necessary for this. Date. No, it's called period, right? Period. And then you have to go, we're not ready yet, elevated by 1 divided by 12. This is basically periodizing the, the um, dates, what I think he's doing, basically. And uh, we're going to put as percentage, two decimals is fine. And you'll find that this is very, very, very close to the actual IRR. Okay. Now, how do you, you press it? Let me show you how to calculate the error first, and then you know what. And the calculations are. But it's a different way to calculate, but it returns almost the same thing. Uh, the way I'm going to show you returns exactly what Excel does, and I'll show you that. So I was looking, it's like, is people trying to find that? Yes. And I found on the Power BI community amazing resource. Here we have um, Livio Lanzo that it says, okay, if you want to calculate IRR, use this measure. And it works very, very well. So we're going to copy. And I'll show you what it does. Or what I think it does, which sometimes is not the same thing. Okay, let's go. New measure. Come on, baby. IRR equal to, we're going to paste. Now we need to change this with our data, right? So data is the name of the table. We need to change that. We need to find all the data. No, I want to show you. We start with data date. We need to find control D, all the data date, and then we're going to substitute it by our project this will just substitute it everywhere. And then period. Okay. And now we need to change data. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Control D, Control D, so it finds all the data. And then we're going to substitute it by project. You cannot click enter because otherwise it won't work. You have to write everything. Project A, I have a video actually on shortcuts on DAX. I think it's just but I'm trying to learn them. Sometimes I forget, but this one I actually managed to learn because I use it. Okay, and then here we have a cash flow. So let's see what our IRR is. Put it in there. Oh, let's format it as a percentage. Yeah, and then we have 7.93. Um, now, let me show you, because I've done this in Excel, so you can actually see, um, I'm just grabbing the file, so you can actually see that it returns the exact same thing in Excel, because, you know, in Excel you have the IRR, IRR <laughs> function. Oh my God, I see. You do have it. So we can check to see that we are actually getting the exact same result as you will get in uh, if you would do this in Excel. And you can see here that this is the same data and is 7.9308. 7.9308. Oh, we need one more. T rate. So as you can see, it's exact same thing. Now, how does it work? And this is how to deconstruct a DAX measure. So the XIRR, so you can see, we, we've seen before now, it is a table 
the cash flow and the date. So what is this thing? This is the only thing that is different and it's fitting another table than the one that we have. So what you do is you copy this and you create a new table because that is creating a table. It is on the table part of the measure. And this is calling a, a table. Let's call it table. And then we paste that in and see how that table looks like. Uh, let's remove the comma. And look at what it does. So what the measure does is it creates this table to feed in, to be able to, you know, to then calculate the cash flow and the um, and the dates. But instead of giving this period, it's giving it's feeding this date. So this is the date that is using to calculate the IRR, and this is the date that he um, that he created. So how about we look at what he did? So what we're going to do, this, this is the first part. You'll see it here. So this is get table project A, which is this, this table, and then create a new column that does this. So let's remove this thing for now. So control X, we're going to need it later. So what this does is it count rows for each period. So it says the first one is ignoring and then it's taking one, two, three, four, five. So it's like indexing everything. The next thing it did, if you remember, is multiply by 365. IRR needs continuous periods, you know, periodized data. So it has to be like same chunks of time periods. So what it's doing is times 365 is actually getting those periods and multiplying them by 365. So this is the first, first period, this is the second period, so these are even periods, but it's moving them in time, like a year ahead. Okay? And the next one is the thing it does, you see, adds. So plus min date. Let me show you. This is what I uh, remove. We're going to remove the times 365 because we already created so this is what it does. It says, okay, calculate the minimum date of the period A. So give me that date everywhere. Okay. And then what it does, so you see it creates the date for all the periods. And then what it does is the last step. It says final period. It is X365 plus column, we didn't give it a name, unfortunately. We did give it a name, mean date. Oh my God, it's hot. So, and now we get our periodized dates. So we can use uh, that to calculate IRR instead. That's the way I understand it. Let me know if I understood something wrong. I am not like a finance master or anything. So, but that's where I understand that is the difference between XIRR and IRR. So there we have them. There we have them. It's as easy as that. Now, the last one that we're going to calculate is XMVP. It returns the net present value for the cash flows that is not necessarily periodic. So this is how it works. The table, this is again the cash flow, the dates and the rate, the discount rate to apply. Okay, so let's give it a world. We're going to create a new measure and this is x net present value equal to x net present value the table, it is called project A. And then we have our cash flow, our, which, our day, no, it's called period. Period, this is where all our dates are. And then, I don't know, a discount of 0 0.1. And this is in, everything is in dollars, so let's keep it in dollars. And 
There we have it. So twenty two thousand dollars profitable. Okay. So I hope I hope this is helpful. You have different ways to calculate IRR, um, XNBP, XIRR, everything. So comments, questions, suggestions, as always, let me know in the comment box. And it is Friday, so have a great uh, weekend. And I will see you again on Monday, as always. Take care. Bye.